Welcome back to another episode of Dr. Me First. It's me, your colleague in medicine, coach in life, queen of burnout, throwing in a little sass there, Dr. freaking Aaron Wiseman. I got to practice what I preach. I'm a recovering workaholic and rest is my detox. (laughs) So my team is pushing me to try to do more rest. I have really been invigorated since I got my new office and my podcasting equipment set up back full time. It's been so fun to be podcasting again and doing live episodes. But they're reminding me too that I'm overworking. So we are problem solving this. And in order to do that, we are doing a reboot showcase. All my work that I've done in the past, I might as well reuse it, right? Recycle, reduce, reuse. And so what we're going to do in this reboot showcase is take old podcast episodes that I've actually been on for other people and play them here on Dr. Me First. It makes me smile a little bit as I go back and listen to years ago when I was doing some of these podcasts and I'm like, wow, I was really smart. I knew a whole lot of things, but I also see how I've changed and how things are different. (laughs) In the world of Aaron Wiseman, we call it, is it long-haired Aaron or short-haired Aaron? (laughs) Because you can definitely see a big change when the hair got lopped off during the pandemic. So listen to the episodes and then see if you can tell when I did that episode on the timeline of everything Aaron Wiseman. Long-haired Aaron, short-haired Aaron. Give me an email. I'd love to hear about it. I'm going to take my own medicine, I'm going to rest a little bit, and I'm still going to pop up episodes for you to listen to. So enjoy this reboot today. And as always, friend, remember, your life, your calling, your pulse absolutely matters. And the badass in me honors the freaking badass in you. Enjoy! Along with individual experts, Surgeon Masters brings you life improvement strategies in 10 minutes. These proven principles and strategies are easy to learn and can be applied immediately, allowing you to practice your best. Here's your host, Jeff Smith. Hi, everyone. I have on our episode a returning guest, Dr. Aaron Wiseman, a family medicine physician and life coach who loves the, telling the world how she went from burnt out to badass. Sounds like a great conversation. Uh, uh, welcome, Erin. Yeah, thank you. I'm so glad to be returning to my badassery, and I hope just to spread it all around to everyone else. And uh, my surgeon audience is glad to have a badass on our, on our podcast today. Uh, yeah, we can glean a little bit from the medicine side, too. I'm super excited, too. I love this topic we're talking about today, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah, and and so being the introvert that I am, I think uh, there's a lot of things that I've been uncomfortable with, and I think I'm getting more comfortable with it. Uh, I think I'm actually just getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't think the discomfort's gone away. Is that good or bad? Right. I mean, don't you see that parallel in your professional life too? It's like when you first get out and you like want to run every single test under the sun because you're like, I just don't know what's going on. But you kind of know what's going on, but you don't like sitting in the uncertainty. And it seems like as you mature a little bit into the practice, then you kind of learn that like, okay, we don't need to check a CBC like Q4 hours. Right. Right. And And so I think that's too in the like the life transition stuff and kind of seeing things outside of the box. You, it's hard. Don't get me wrong. Sitting in in uncertainty is never fun. Yeah, I think that. I mean, there are certainly some people, a minority of people, that I think enjoy that, maybe because they practice this so much. So I think the key is that. We need to all be practicing this some to increase our ability to be comfortable with the uncomfortable, right? 
Yeah, I think so. I think there's some people who are um, thrill seekers, and the uncomfortable for them brings that excitement. And then there's the rest of us who the uncomfortable brings up other emotions, like fear, like shame, like just not being maybe as perfect as we think we should be. And so I think it's really important that we wrestle with that because it's not the uncertainty that makes us feel so awful. It's the stuff under the surface. And I think, you know, one of the uh, things I got from talking to you before is that the this is where we have our ability to also make progress. That That being in that close to, you know, above our comfort zone is how we advance. I mean, certainly I've seen that with a ton of things that I've improved that it was being quite uncomfortable. And then, you know, and then even kind of keeping that discomfort in existence, though, the the shift of whether it be surgical skills or medical knowledge, uh, keep lightly pushing that element. How, how do you help people find that edge, I guess I would ask. Yeah, because you want to be on the leading edge, you don't be on the cutting edge. So I think there's there's an amount of healthy uncertainty, and that's where you're surrounded and supported um, in a way to explore maybe this area that you haven't tried before. And I mean, we can talk on, on the medical side. It's like when you go into a procedure that you've never done before, but you've got the support around you. You've got the expertise that you know that you can call in in case, you know, things aren't going the right way. But it's such an amazing feeling when you do that for the first time, you get through that procedure and you're like, wow, like I just did that. And so like on the life side, then it's kind of a similar thing. It was like, for instance, when my dishwasher broke and I was looking at it and I'm like, you know, I'm not exactly sure how to fix this, but I am a physician and I know how to use YouTube. So let's just give it a whirl and see, you know, and it was amazing. We got in there, we took it apart, realized some pieces were burned up, ordered it off Amazon, use YouTube again to install and boom, I have a fixed dishwasher all by myself. And so I think it's just important for all of us to know that there, there's a place to have a healthy uncertainty. And then there's places when when you're in an unhealthy zone. And that that's when you're being overstretched. That's when you're not in a protective place. That's when you're not just one step out of your comfort zone. You're like a whole mile away from your comfort zone. And you don't want to make those huge, big leaps. That would be like taking a medical student and throwing them in, you know, to the operating room all by themselves. And so we know that's not proper. So I just remind people it's incremental steps. Because you want to keep growing, you want to keep expanding, because nothing grows from your comfort zone but the same fruit that you've already been producing. So you've got to do those small incremental steps, not those huge mile leaps. And if we put this in a little bit of context of kind of a stepwise approach, kind of because I think this is a great message and I just kind of want to hit it home for uh, all the folks listening, how would you, how would you approach that? I think first, um, you know, you have to, of course, tailor it on where you're wanting to grow. Maybe let's talk about it as saying like you you maybe want to transition to a different um, position um, in your life. And so what I always explain to my people are the triple A's. So first you want to get awareness around it. Why are you wanting to do this? Are you running away from something or are you moving towards something? Or maybe it's a combination of both. And that's fine, but you just want to be aware on why you're wanting to move from where you're at to somewhere new. The second A is assessment. So that's when I want people to get really clear. We're super good about assessing other people in situations, but we're terrible at assessing ourselves. And so that's when sometimes you need the perspective of another person or maybe just a good battery of questions to do some self-assessment. And then the third A is action. So like you talk about all the time on your podcast, it's so important to have those action steps. Because if you just keep talking, if you just keep thinking, but you don't put any feet on that, you're, of course, not going to go anywhere. So I just remind people that action steps, they don't need to be huge. Just like I said, just those small things in a new direction. Maybe it's calling somebody that you don't know, but is in the system that you're looking at to be like, hey, 
What's it really like to work there? Maybe it's actually submitting your CV for review. Maybe it's just asking for something that you always have wanted, but you've just never quite done that. So the three A's, awareness, assessment, and action. That's uh, fantastic. Good information. Um, I'm already feeling more comfortable with the uncomfortable. Um, why don't you just drive that key message one time home in like 30 seconds for us? All right. So remember, if you're feeling uncertain and uncomfortable, you're not weird and you're not in the wrong space. You're maybe just growing into a new place. So you just need to look at it, assess the, or get awareness into what you're feeling. Look at the emotions underneath of it. Do a quick assessment on maybe why you're feeling that way, how you've gotten to this place, and then look and see what action steps you need to do, maybe not evidently to move away from the uncertainty, but to move in a direction where you'd be more certain. Thanks so much, Erin. That's a great message. I'm not going to repeat it because you did such a great job doing it. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely, and I'd love to come back anytime. There you have it. In less than 10 minutes, this is Jeff Smith along with Dr. Aaron Wiseman. Until the next episode of Life Improvement Strategies for the Surgeon Who Wants More. Ciao. Now, take 10 minutes and put your plan into action to practice your best. Hey there, I got some really important stuff to share with you. Besides developing Dr. Me First over the last, I don't know, I think it's like seven or eight years now, and Burnt Out to Badass, which is a little bit newer, it's been going on for about three to four years, I've actually been developing another business kind of on the side. And a lot of you folks are surprised when you hear about it. It's called Physician Coaching Alliance, and it does a lot of amazing things. First of all, if you're a chief wellness officer or you want to see more wellness in your organization, hospital, medical group, residency program, et cetera, Physician Coaching Alliance is your answer. We do consulting and coaching within organizations to bring better wellness into the healthcare space. So you need to go over to the website, physiciancoachingalliance.com, drop me an email with the organization, who I contact, who I talk to and we can come in and help your institution. The other part of Physician Coaching Alliance is for those who are looking for a personal coach. Of course, I would love to be your coach, but I also know that I'm not everybody's, well, taste and spicy sauce. Let's put it that way. So there we have a menu of over 70 coaches who specialize in so many different things, who come from different parts of medicine. Some people are in medicine, some people are out of medicine, some people are hybrid. It's just a, an amazing group of an eclectic amount of skills and personalities. I'm sure you can find your next coach there. So again, same website, physiciancoachingalliance.com. And lastly, if you are a coach and you're tired of going in alone, maybe you're in a slump, maybe you just want to be around other physician coaches who are willing to give and are over the hustle culture and not about competing with each other, but knowing that how we heal healthcare is better together, then also Physician Coaching Alliance is the place for you. PCA fulfills so many of these needs and more. It's all on the same website, physiciancoachingalliance.com. You can hang out with us on LinkedIn and on Instagram by the exact same name, physiciancoachingalliance.com. Yep, I've been busy. <laughs> running multiple companies, practicing medicine, taking care of alpacas. But you know what? It is my heart and joy to do this. And I hope that PCA can become a part of your story too.